Hi there! In this video, I'm going to show you how to create some pretty convincing looking uh, blood and gore. I'm also going to show you the process behind making a diorama that I made uh, that was designed specifically to demonstrate some of these gore effects. Most of this video will demonstrate the entire process of how I created this diorama, but there will be a tutorial later on in the video that covers the various techniques of creating this kind of gore effect, so feel free to skip to that chapter in the video if you want to get straight to the nasty stuff. <laughs> so just a bit of a brief uh, disclaimer before I start. I'm by no means an expert in crafting or painting or anything like that. I've only been doing this hobby for about two years now, so I guess I can't really technically consider myself a beginner anymore, but I'm certainly not like an authority on anything. <laughs> um, and that's kind of what this channel really is about. It's about me just kind of learning the hobby and exploring and trying new, new things and new techniques. As such, uh, chances are when you watch this video, you're going to notice things that I've either done wrong or could have been done better or whatever the case is. If you notice anything or if you think that you could reach out and help in some way and just offer me some of your advice, please do, please do, because um, this is all a big learning process for me. So yeah, leave a comment below or, or email me. Um, yeah. So this build was originally supposed to be uh, three builds, but it was taking too long. <laughs> it, I, I'm in the process of making a ridiculously detailed diorama that I realized just needs to kind of be its own video, so that is what's going to be next. Um, so I decided to just make this video very much just to focus on kind of gore effects and this diorama. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, later on there will be a gore tutorial, but for now let's just dive into how I made what I like to call Hanging Rock. So, back in my previous video, the terrain build that I did, one of the last steps that I did was, uh, I, I kind of came across a happy accident um, whenever I was, I was painting up one of these barricade things, and I wanted to have a poster on it, and I had already glued a poster on using PVA, and this poster was just made out of paper, just printed paper. And I wanted to add some kind of blood splatter effects, but when I added the blood mixture itself, it reactivated the PVA and turned it into this mushy kind of mess. But what I immediately realized was how cool it looked. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, th this this looks like a like a flap of skin or, or something. And like there's real depth there and there's real texture there. So that's kind of what led me sort of down the rabbit hole then of thinking, well, oh my God, like there's so many different ways that, that, that you know, I could incorporate this and make different kind of gore effects. So that was sort of the the original idea behind behind doing a gore tutorial to begin with. But this specific idea about having hanging rock, I basically took the idea from this from a previous design that I had done of a tree, which was really complicated to make, but it came out looking pretty cool. And I had always had this idea of maybe having a tree with like a like a cage hanging from it or something, and I had actually gone as far as to purchase this this little cage off of Etsy which I have uh, yet to use for anything because the scale's kind of wrong, it's just a little bit too big, and it looks really cool, and I tried to sort of make my own one at one point, but it just, it just didn't work, I'm, I'm not at that level yet. So I kind of wanted to do something a little bit similar with this by either having a tree with someone hanging from it or having gallows or something along those lines. I had this kind of image in my head that I remembered from playing the video game The Last of Us 2, where for anyone who's played that video game, uh, I'm sure you'll remember one of the factions in it likes to hang people and disembowel them. And I kind of had this this image still in my head. I was like, okay, I'm gonna go for I'm gonna go for something like that. I kind of wish that I had actually gone to the video game and taken a reference photo because it would have made some of the steps later on a little easier to achieve. But again, I'm just sort of in the process of kind of learning this hobby and it's only very recently that I've discovered how important reference photos are. I cannot, like if you're just starting out, I cannot emphasize enough, get a reference photo. It makes everything so much easier if you have something there to copy. And I know this sounds like, well, you know, duh, obviously. Uh, like I'd, I'd obviously heard of people using reference photos before, but I'd never really understood how beneficial it could be because I'm not an artist or anything. I can't, like I can't just sit there and picture, like if I drew a dog, it would look like a car or whatever, right? <laughs> but <laughs> I, I'd like it, having a reference photo in front of me, it just makes everything so much easier. And it obviously means that, that the results that you get from whatever build you're making are a lot more convincing and a lot more realistic. Yeah, so I kind of wish I had gone to The Last of Us for a reference photo, but it's fine, it's fine. It, it, it turned out all right, so it's, it's not a big deal. So for the build itself, 
I started off just by cutting out a base out of this, um, I think it's XPS foam. And yeah, I just cut it into a circle, kind of roughly guessed sort of the size that I would need. I beveled the edges, which is something that is really important if you're doing any bases for anything, is beveling the edges helps to blend the piece into whatever battle mat or whatever you're, you're using. And then I also cut a hole for what I wanted. I wanted to have like a little puddle, a bit like the first build that I did, the tree. Um, I had this cool looking puddle underneath a rock and I wanted to sort of emulate that. I thought it would have been a cool idea to have the gallows that I was going to make sitting kind of perched on, up on top of a rock. So I just went out to the garden and found a rock. <laughs> uh, uh, looked for one that kind of seemed like it would suit the purpose and just started kind of cutting ridges into, into the foam and then used hot glue to just glue it into place. I also added a few smaller rocks here and there. I positioned the rocks just in a way that kind of, you know, looked natural. Um, it's nothing really complicated there. <laughs> just stick them down. I, the, the rocks that I used, incidentally, you can just get the stuff outside on the ground. Like, you can buy it if you want to, but I just went outside, um, just out the front of my house with a dustpan and brush, and looked like a lunatic in front of my neighbours um, while I was brushing up dirt off of the road. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's great. It works perfect. It like you'll never need anything else um as far as as far as I can tell. So making the gallows itself, again, I was kind of using reference photos to just kind of prompt me. I had originally thought, well, maybe I could have had like a series of gallows, maybe two or three of them. But then I thought, no, let's just keep things simple. This just needs to be a demonstration of a particular gore technique. It doesn't need to be this big, huge, complicated piece. So, yeah, I just made the gallows out of just wood, I think, yeah, uh, matchsticks that you can just purchase out of, well, pretty much anywhere you can get them, like supermarkets and stuff sell them. Um, just made that out of matchsticks, just cut, cut to size with a knife. Really, really, really straightforward, but looks very effective. I have this big giant box of wood here of different, sort of, like, lollipop sticks and coffee stirrers and different stuff. They're fantastic because you, you really don't realize how versatile different pieces of small wood can be until you start kind of cutting them, up, cutting them up and making things out of them. The current build that I'm working on at the minute, which I'll talk about a little bit at the end of the video, will be a great example of that because it uses lots of wood to make structures and things. But anyway, back to, back to this one. So, some of the early corpse ideas. Uh, it probably, right, okay, I'll just be honest and straight up with you. In, in this particular piece, this is the thing that I'm the most happy with by far. I did not think that it was going to come out looking the way that it did, but I had absolutely no clue how to go about making a corpse. My daughter plays as Adeptus Rortas, and we had these leftover parts from, I think they're Penitent Engines. I, I never really bought the idea, like, if you're gonna hang someone from something, you're not gonna strap their arms to their sides, like, it just doesn't look, didn't look natural, didn't look normal, so what I ended up doing, because I knew that I wanted to have a corpse with their hands tied behind their back, and, you know, I've never, I've never converted anything like this before. Um, so I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do it, but I had actually purchased these little skeletons from, I think it's off of Etsy somewhere, I'll see if I can find a link to them if anybody wants to purchase them themselves. But yeah, I just had these skeletons and I thought, yeah, with a few precise cuts, I should be able to reposition the arms and legs to make it kind of look like a person that's hanging. So the noose then for around this unfortunate person's neck, that is just made out of a length of string that has been separated into the strands. Yeah, it, it, it works. So, yeah, w when it came time to actually convert the arms and legs, I was not sure if I was going to be able to achieve what I was going for. I kind of really wish that I had used the reference photo because trying to understand, well, how would, how would this bone be? Like, what shape would it be in? What way would it be pointing? It was unnecessarily complicated when a good reference photo would have been able, able to tell me straight away, you know, how, how I need to make these cuts and how I need to file things down and glue them in place and whatever. But when I did get them glued in place, like the arms behind the back and, and the legs together, I just, <laughs> I had this like incredible burst of excitement um, just by realizing that, oh my God, th this, this actually does look like a person, like the skeleton of somebody that is hanging with their hands tied behind their back. And it really gave me so much sort of impetus and enthusiasm for, for continuing this idea because I wasn't really sure if it would work, but, but I, I think it does. I think it came out really cool. Next step was then to add some rocks to the base of the gallows. 
just I, I kind of like the idea of it. Um, I'm not 100% sure if I got the placement of them right. They look a bit, a little bit wonky, but I think the idea is okay. Those, again, are just rocks, you know, from out in the garden somewhere. Just glued in place with, uh, I think, super glue and super glue activator. Nothing, nothing fancy or complicated about that. So next up, I needed to make the basing mix. That is a mixture of approximately, I would say, about 60 to 40 percent. Um, no, it's not spackle. What, what do you call it? It's just all purpose filler. I forget what it's called in America. I'm sorry. But it's all-purpose filler mixed with about 40% PVA. What the PVA does is whenever the mixture dries, it really protects it and keeps it quite solid so it's not going to chip away or whatever. Into that then I put some black paint just to kind of color it into a closer gray to make it easier to paint later on. And then threw some sand into there, very, very fine sand. Um, I think I collected this sand from a beach somewhere or something, um, probably. Or maybe at the front of my house with a dustpan and brush it in, I don't know. So I added the basing mix then to it, just kind of applied it. Not too liberally. If you're going to use mixes like this, be very, very, very careful about how, how thick you, you put this stuff on, because when it dries, it can almost look like liquid, and it just doesn't look natural, naturally like rock. It's kind of too rounded and stuff. It just, it just doesn't look right. It's far better to put thin layers of this on and then reapply then again if you need to. I then applied um, some more sand to the top and a couple more rocks. I used a basing glue to do this, and this was Matte Scenic Sealant Spray by Geek Gaming Services. Now, <laughs> I want to take a moment to, to explain wh why I have this in my house and where I got it from. Somebody reached out to me after the last video, this Australian lunatic man who is hilarious, uh, who runs a channel and a website called Zorpazorp, and I'm sure all you guys have heard of him, but I, I never had. He was just some dude that just kind of reached out in the comment section, and he was like, hey, listen, uh, you know, I like your stuff. Do you want me to send you a few things? And I, okay, sure. And that's when I found out who he was, and like, my god, the... <laughs> This guy's stuff is incredible, and like here he is talking to just, you know, little me and my stupid YouTube channel with uh, two videos up. I was like, what the hell? But yeah, he, he, he sent me a box of all kinds of different stuff, which I'm already in the process of using. I, like, dude, if you're listening to this, man, I can't thank you enough. For you to kind of reach out and say, hey, believe in what you're doing, here's some stuff to help you along your way. That's so cool. That's like, that's one one of the things that I've I've really noticed already about, about this whole kind of crafting community is just how, how cool everyone is. Everybody really genuinely wants to kind of help each other and it's, it's yeah, it's pretty humbling. But yeah, look, for anybody that is not aware of Zorp Zorp, get over to his YouTube channel and watch his stuff because my god, he's class. And if you need materials, like this isn't a, a like a proper, you know, promoted video or whatever, he's not paying me to say this. You know, if you want materials, go to him and buy them. Because he's cool. <laughs> um, I just thought I'd take a little aside just to say that. So yeah, thanks again, Zorp Zorp. Thank you. Yeah, I then applied the base coat. Uh, so, I have had this continuous problem since I've started crafting with using foam and using spray cans. And for- <laughs> I know what, like, half of you are already like, yeah, I know exactly what he's about to say. I kept destroying my own models and not understanding why. If you're using a rattle can, you need to be very, very, very careful about spraying foam because it melts, it melts your stuff, like it destroys it. I learned this on a model that I made um, a while back, which you can see here. And if you look closely to this part of it, you can actually see the damage that was done. And I didn't understand why this was happening. So what happened with this build was the little hole that I had cut into the bottom of, of the base of this for where I wanted the, the little pond to be, that had some exposed foam, and it completely melted it. I mean, it burned the entire way through and made a giant hole. And that's when I kind of, like, enough was enough. <laughs> I had to figure out what was going on. Why was this happening? What was causing this? Yeah, as it turns out, you know, two minutes of Google searching would have answered it for me, but whatever. Yes, the accelerant that is in rattle cans will absolutely melt the hell out of, out of foam products. So the way around this, it's actually extremely simple. Just coat the foam first in PVA. Water down PVA, maybe a couple of layers of it, and then spray it from a little bit of a distance so that whenever the primer is hitting the model, it's almost already dry and you'll have no problems whatsoever. So yeah, I guess I learned that the hard way. 
<laughs> whatever, whatever. At least, um, at least my future models will be protected. So then I painted another layer of paint on and then dry brushed it with, um, I'm gonna say probably Ulthuan Grey is what I used. I next created the entrails for this poor unfortunate hanging person. That was done by using green stuff and this cool little green stuff roller. But yeah, I was able to make what kind of looks like intestines that have kind of spilled out. Looks okay. I also added a hood because I knew I wanted the figure to be to be hooded. I don't think I really got the effect right. I probably should have I probably should have actually just literally tried using a piece of plastic from a plastic bag because I, I don't know, it just his head kind of looks like a like a plum or something. <laughs> it doesn't quite look right, but uh, you know, I suppose it's okay. But yeah, I think I would definitely do that that bit differently next time. I also created the clothing for the corpse. And this was a complete accident. I didn't initially want to have clothing on this corpse because I don't know how to do that. I was literally just kind of adding like PVA and tissue paper mixes, bits of flattened out, stretched out green stuff to try and replicate like skin hanging off or, or something along those lines. But it ended up kind of looking like torn rags and I thought, all right, I'll go with that. Yeah, it, it kind of accidentally came together to make something that looks I suppose halfway convincing. So I painted a bit more of the base. I did add bits of brown washes here and there. I added some bushes and shrubs. There is this cool technique to make reeds where you can just take the bristles of an old brush and just cut them off. It's a bit fiddly to work with, but if you if you position it properly over a dollop of, of super glue, you can make reeds out of them. Um, you don't have to buy those. These other shrubs that you see, those are bought. I can't remember who makes them, but I'll, I'll put an image up for anybody that's interested in getting those. That bush as well that you see is like, I, I think it's like a, it's not flock, but it's this kind of weird bush material stuff. Again, I'll see if I can find out what that is and post a, post an image or a link to it. I will say that I might have used different shrubs if I could do this again. I have these really colourful, bright looking kind of flower things. And ob obviously, you know, I'm trying to make grim dark stuff most of the time. But I think it might have been kind of funny to have all these pretty flowers <laughs> around the base of a really, really grotesque looking scene of, of, of death. I think that might have been cool, that sort of juxtaposition between gore and pretty bright, colourful flowers. I think that could have been fun. So I wanted to make a little sign saying something on it and I have sheets here of printed posters that uh, I downloaded from somewhere. I'd love to know where actually where I got these from. I, I might have a proper look and see where I got these from because I would like to properly credit the person that made these. But yeah, I've, I've got a bunch of these printed out and I noticed one that was just a little small sign saying heretic and I thought, hey, perfect. So the sign itself is just made from uh, just a piece of wood. Uh, I think it's like a coffee stir or whatever. And yeah, just stuck on with PVA and painted a little bit just to kind of blend the wood together with the paper and um, yeah it looks good it then came time to making the blood mixture now i'm not going to go into crazy detail here about um, how to do that because i'm going to save that for the tutorial portion later on in this video so yeah i started painting the corpse applying the blood mixture to kind of like his legs or whatever I, I wasn't expecting to kind of be creating clothing, so the folds of the clothing aren't quite right or natural, so I, like, painting it was very, very, very difficult. I've never painted, like, cloth material or anything like that before. I didn't really know how to do it, so I just kind of, it's almost pretty much just one colour with lots of gore and sort of oils and stuff all over the top of it, just to kind of hide it. It serves its purpose as, as, as getting the effect across of a person that's hanging. You know, it doesn't need to be any more complicated than that, I think. So I made up a gore mixture. So these techniques, as I say, I'm going to cover those in, in depth a bit later on in this video. But I applied all that to the model and then painted up all of the gore. I also added some extra bones here and there underneath. I possibly went a little bit overboard with the gore effects, I think. There was just a little bit too much of it, I think, maybe. Uh, I, it, I, had, I did originally have this finished and I kind of was looking at it thinking, I, th that could do with more gore, and so I went for more, and do you know what, it's true what they say, less is more. But it came out okay. I am happy enough with the result. 
it's not the most detailed piece ever made. It wasn't really intended to be. It was just supposed to be this little thing that's cobbled together to demonstrate one particular method of making gore and how you could incorporate that. If I was going to do this again, I probably would make it a little bit more detailed. I would work on the dry brushing a bit more, I think. I would probably add more sort of flourishes, details like bushes and stuff like that, just to give it a bit more life. And I probably wouldn't go so heavy handed with the gore, but it looks pretty cool. It looks okay. And it's going to be fun on the tabletop when we uh, play our next game of 40k. Okay, so for this part of the video, this is going to be a tutorial that demonstrates some different techniques that you can apply in order to achieve some uh, pretty cool looking gore effects. Just a bit of a disclaimer, this is not a proper diorama or anything. Like, none of this is going to be subtle at all. Uh, this is just a little small thing that I put together just to demonstrate these effects. If you were actually going to apply any of these to your own models, you'd probably be, be a bit more subtle about it than I've been. So yeah, as I mentioned uh, at the start of the video, I did have that happy accident once where I was applying PVA to paper and it created some really interesting texture just purely by accident. And that was kind of what gave me the idea to, to do this tutorial to begin with and to really kind of experiment with these different ideas. So this is kind of what I've come up with and we'll, we'll go through it each thing one at a time. So yeah, the base itself, uh, again, this isn't the focus of the video. I'll just briefly detail what it's all made from. It's just a base with some texture on it to dry brush, some walls that are made out of, I think it's XPS foam, a little bit of rubble, a tree that's just made out of some roots that I found out when I was uh, going for a walk one day, and this lamp post that I made. And to be totally honest, I kind of wish I had recorded the process of me making this lamp post because I'm so proud of how it looks. It came out so well. That housing that you see there, that lamppost housing where the bulb would be, that's just a Lego spoon. And as soon as I saw it, I thought, oh my god, that is that has been made <laughs> for this. Like, it fits perfectly. Um, but yeah, that's just a, an upturned Lego spoon then with a dollop of hot glue inside to replicate the shape of the bulb. Um, but yeah, I kind of wish I had detailed the process of making that, but I'm definitely going to do it again in, in, other, in other models because, yeah, I think it came out really well. I have also used these two models here. I, this one guy here, the smelly boy, he is just a, I think he's a plague marine um, who was just painted with a bit of contrast paint. I do not have time to paint any of my minis. <laughs> I just don't. I don't know how people find the time. I guess I'm just too busy making making terrain to, to actually paint any of the models that we have. Uh, but of the few ones that I do have painted, I, I, like I've got some of these pox walkers painted here. So I just took one of these to demonstrate some of the techniques as well. Okay, so in terms of the ingredients for creating convincing looking blood, there's really only two colours that you need, just to create blood with nothing more complicated than that, and that is blood for the blood god and a brown ink. It does need to be quite a rich, dark, deep brown colour that you mix in with your blood for the blood god to achieve different kind of shades of, of blood, uh, but we'll go, go into that in a bit more detail in a moment. In addition to that, to create various other effects, you can use some other things that I found which were pink horror, pallid witch flesh, texture paint, and water texture as well, of course. Now, one of the really crucial ways to create convincing looking gore effects is to create depth using tissue paper and PVA. Um, you can also use different texture paints to, to create this effect too, but again, we're gonna go into all of that in detail. I will also be using some green stuff, and there is a surprise ingredient uh, towards the end, so stick around for that. <laughs> yeah, so I created this little swatch of colours just to demonstrate the different shades of blood. So, Blood for the Blood God by itself. As you can see, it's a very, very, very rich red colour. It's very bright and it isn't particularly realistic. It isn't how blood really tends to look, which is why you mix Blood for the Blood God with other colours to achieve different effects. I find that Blood for the Blood God works best if you're using it to kind of replicate fresh blood. Blood is very, very rarely like bright red. Um, it just doesn't really work that way. That's why it's best to mix it with shades of brown to sort of denote how old the blood is. And the older the blood is supposed to be, the browner it will be in colour. It just depending on whatever your diorama or your model requires. If it's fresh blood, you're going to use more blood for the Blood God. If it's supposed to be a little bit older, you're going to put a bit more brown into it. 
The first technique I'm going to show you then is using Uhu or Yuhu, I think it's called, to these bases of these of these uh, smelly boys here. So this is a really interesting technique that I've come across a couple of different times. Yuhu is a fantastic glue, as I'm sure you've you've all used before, but it's really annoying because it is really really stringy. But that's great. That's good. <laughs> that actually works really well for this technique because that's kind of what you want. What I've done is I've mixed my blood mixture with some Yuhu and then just used a cocktail stick to wrap some of those strands while it's still quite wet around like a weapon and then to the base of these of these models as you see here. And it's a very simple effective technique to make it look like a weapon or, or something is like clawing off the ground or off of a body or something or out of some body parts or whatever. Like, I, I've seen some tutorials of people using the Yoohoo technique to create, like, drool in the mouth of a monster. So anywhere where's, where there's the indication of motion or movement, this technique could work really, really well. But as you can see here, it looks fantastic. It looks really good. It gives that impression of, of motion and movement there. It's, uh, it's quite dynamic. So on these two guys, I added a PVA mix to the base. Now I'm going to go into a bit more detail about that PVA mix in a minute or two. But what I would take a moment to just mention is the importance of texture when creating gore effects. What I initially used to use was I would have mixed Typhus Corrosion, which is a very, very coarse technical paint, I believe it is, from Citadel. I mixed that in with the blood mix just, just to create a bit of texture and a bit of depth. The problem I found with that was, though, I use a bottle of that quite quickly, so instead what I have ended up using is this AK Corrosion Texture, which is fantastic stuff. It does need to be colorized, it like looks pink whenever you first get it, sort of pinky brown color, but it mixes with other colors really, really well. And it's fantastic, again, to create this kind of illusion of texture there. Works really, really well if you mix it in with your blood mixture to create that kind of effect. What I will also note at this point as well is the importance of having some colour show through your blood effects. Because again, blood is not really a uniform, especially guts and kind of entrails and stuff, are not one uniform colour. You want other colours to show through. The colours you use are quite important because those are going to be what comes through whenever you apply your blood mix on top. So for this street light, I wanted to have like a hanging corpse. To achieve that effect, I took one of the legs from one of the skeletons, the 3D printed skeletons that I mentioned earlier on in the tutorial, just took one of the legs from that. And what I did was I attached to that some dried PVA. So I've come across a couple of different techniques for, for using PVA in interesting ways. Uh, one of them was to microwave some PVA and to scrape it off a plate once it's been microwaved. And then you can use that. It almost looks like a natural kind of flap of skin. But the last time that I was in Warhammer Belfast, I was talking to one of the guys there about this tutorial that I was making. And he said, while you're sitting there kind of painting your models, dab some PVA onto different parts of your hand and let that just dry naturally. And then you get these kind of cool texture effects from the lines in your skin and whatnot. And yeah, it works fantastic. So once I had these, what I did was then I created this kind of flap of skin thing that's hanging down from this, from this lamppost. One thing I will say though is, it's quite important, if you are to use this kind of PVA technique, is to add super glue to it first. The reason for that is, it's made of PVA, so if you start applying paints and stuff to it, or anything wet, any washes or anything like that, it's going to reactivate the PVA, and you're going to lose the effect, it's going to go. So, uh, just an important thing to remember there, cover it with super glue first before you paint it. I wanted to try and create the illusion of like brains that had been smashed on a rock or something. So yeah, I just took this kind of stone here and I applied some pink horror to it and then applied a blood mix in various colors and shades around it. Quite often gore and blood and stuff is not just about using red, it's about using other colors to kind of hint towards, you know, internal organs and stuff. Um, yeah, so that's pretty straightforward. It's literally just pink horror and then some blood effects around it. So adding the gore to the ground, this is really kind of crucial because this really comes back to the happy accident that I had with the PVA and the paper. And what I found was you can use PVA mixed with tissue. So just ordinary bathroom tissue, cut it up into little pieces, mix some PVA in it, 
tiny little bit of water just to make it a, a little bit more malleable and then apply it to your base or apply it to your model. Once you've done that and let it dry just a little bit, it doesn't need to dry to complete hardness, you don't need to leave it overnight or anything, but just let it dry so there's a bit of a surface on top of it and then start applying your different colours on top of that. And what that does is not only does it create interesting texture and it makes it look as if like there's lumps of things and you know internal organs or whatever but there's also some of that white color will show through so it makes it a lot easier to have kind of definition and contrast between colors because again you don't just want this uniform red you want to have different pinks and browns and whatever other different colors in this particular example i took some of the contrast paint plague bear flesh and applied some of that to the ground so that whenever I applied blood effects on top of it, it would have this kind of grimy, sort of orangey, browny looking kind of color. I like, I don't know, stomach contents or something, um, something grotesque to, to kind of come up from, from beneath. But yeah, that's one idea you could use. You could use whatever colors you want to come up with different color schemes too. Um, especially, like, I like the idea of maybe using kind of greens and yellows uh, to denote maybe, you know, sort of Nurgle guts or whatever. But yeah, go crazy with it. Just experiment with different things and see what you get. For making this explosion and skin wall effect thing that we see here, that's really, really, really straightforward. That is literally just a piece of paper, not tissue paper, just ordinary, you know, printer paper, and then apply lots and lots and lots of PVA to it, stick it to the wall, try and arrange it in a way that looks natural. Now, the way that I've done mine here is because this is supposed to just be a demonstration of the technique. It's quite large. If I was actually going to apply this effect to a proper diorama, I most likely would have used something quite a lot smaller than this. But it does give you an idea of how you can use this effect to create what looks like a large flap of skin that's hit a wall after an explosion. But the thing to really sell this effect is to get these microscopic droplets of blood all over the walls around that area. And that's a really cool and fun technique. I love doing this. It's kind of scary to use, but it is a lot of fun to do. It's simply just take a brush loaded with lots and lots of the blood mixture, but you water it down a little bit. And then you just blow through a straw, just take a straw and blow through it. And yeah, you get this really cool effect. It's a bit scary to use because it is a one time thing. It's like whatever result you get from it, that's it. You're stuck with it unless you want to potentially have to repaint an entire model. That is why it's very important to make sure that you don't have really, really thick paint on your brush, because if you do and you blow through it, the droplets themselves are going to be very, very large and it's not going to look natural. So make sure to water it down very, very slightly. But yeah, it's really straightforward, uh, it comes out really well. So for these hanging droplets of blood, these didn't come out quite right. I think I should have spent a bit more time really, really nailing the effect, but the principle behind them is quite simple. I just took some of these strands of wire from this wire mesh that I have, and what you do is you apply some super glue to the middle of it, let the super glue run down the wire, and as it reaches the bottom, you blast it with the super glue activator, and it hardens it into what looks like a droplet. But to really sell this technique though, you have to have the wire perfectly, perfectly straight, and the droplet has to look perfectly straight. That's the bit that I didn't quite get right here doing this. But if you do get that right, then it's, it, it does look like a droplet of blood. Uh, but yeah, it's, a, it's an effective technique if you get it right. So yeah, I made this bloody tree. I don't know why a tree would be bleeding, <laughs> I have no idea. Maybe these guys here just kind of enjoyed themselves a little bit too much, who knows. Uh, but yeah, we have a tree that's covered in kind of the stringy stuff that Uhu from earlier on, and these, obviously these droplet effects. But yeah, I wanted them to be kind of, the droplets kind of pointing down towards what was going to be guts lying on the ground. So, we'll get to how we made those. So for the first pile, this was made from green stuff. So the way that I've created these is I purchased this green stuff roller and it was sitting in my drawer for ages and I was never using it because I didn't really know how to be honest. But I went and looked at a tutorial and I realized that yeah, you really actually can make some cool looking like cabling and sort of tentacles, that kind of effect. But you can also make like intestines and, and organs and cool looking things like that with it as well. So it's pretty straightforward, just take a bit of green stuff, uh, roll it extremely thinly, place it onto the roller, run it back and forth, and then that gives it a little bit of texture there. Really straightforward. Once you have that made, uh, what I did then was I painted it with pallid witch flesh. 
just to give the indication of other color coming up through the blood mix. Um, but yeah, once that was dry, I glued it in place on top of some of the PVA and tissue paper mix and then applied the blood effects on top of that. And it looks really convincing. It really does. It looks cool. Your eye kind of goes straight towards it because it does look so natural. So for the other pile of guts on the ground, what I used to create this particular effect, if you don't have green stuff and you don't have green stuff roller, you can also use noodles. Now, <laughs> look, bear with me here, okay? I, I really did want to kind of experiment with some new techniques and stuff and whatever I could think up to create uh, new and interesting ways of making gore. I wanted to experiment with whatever I could think of. And I was trying to think of a way of maybe using like spaghetti or something, but it was the wrong scale. So I ended up going for blue dragon fine egg noodles, which apparently you can also eat. But the, you know, who, who cares about that? Uh, yeah. They're pretty much the right scale for making like piles of guts and, and whatnot. It doesn't have quite the texture on there that green stuff does with the green stuff roller, but it's fine. It doesn't really need to. You can use things like this in a pinch. It's really whatever you can kind of come up with. And yeah, uh, handily as well, uh, they come pre-painted. Uh, so yeah, they're already yellow. So it, it made it interesting then to just kind of throw some paint on top of it and get some of that color come up through it. You will obviously do want to apply some PVA glue to it to harden it once you've cooked the noodles and applied them to your model. Um, hey, look, I'm I'm throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks, so I guess it kind of turned out not too bad looking for what it is. Now, one of the really important techniques to add to make this look like convincing gore is to have some kind of a glossy, shiny surface on top of it. Now, I find that the best way to achieve this is by using this uh, water texture uh, by Vallejo. This is now the third time that I've mentioned it in three videos, and I'm probably going to mention it in every single video that I ever do because it is so versatile, you can use it for so much. In this particular instance, I'm just using it to apply a little bit of a layer of glossy effect to just kind of bring that richness up and just to give it that a bit more depth and a bit more realism. If you don't apply a glossy effect, it looks a bit flat and a bit kind of dry and it just doesn't really sell the effect of gore properly. Like gore is quite sort of reflective and is slimy and everything and this, this is a great product to be able to achieve that. So just to reiterate then, this is not a proper diorama. This is, I just put this together to demonstrate some of these different techniques. If I wanted to actually make a diorama dedicated to sort of making, you know, different gore effects or whatever, I would have been a lot more subtle about things and I would have done things in a way that had a bit more of a narrative to them. This is literally just a way to demonstrate how convincing things can potentially look. And to highlight how convincing uh, things can look, all you need to do is look at my, my paint palette uh, after creating this because, uh, yeah, it looks like I was painting with a nosebleed. So yeah, again, all of these techniques can be experimented with. Certain things work here, certain things I think need to be refined a little bit more. But I think the most important part of it is, if you're going to apply any of these techniques, is to make sure you get the right shade of blood for the effect that you're trying to achieve, and also to, to create some sense of texture and depth, either using a PVA technique or texture paints or, what, or whatever it is. You really do want to create some kind of visual interest by having some of that texture there in place. But yeah, that is that. Okay, that's pretty much it for this video. Before I go, I would like to thank everybody for the insane response uh, to the last video that, that I released and the feedback everyone gave. I just, like, I was blown away. I mentioned earlier about how kind of cool the crafting community is and to see people come out and genuinely want to give me hints and tips and and just yeah everybody just genuinely wants to see each other succeed it's it's such a cool little sort of hobby space you know so thank you everybody but yeah please reach out with any any like tips that you have any ideas that you have ways that you think that i could improve uh leave a comment below or or feel free to email me if you like these videos, uh, hit subscribe, do the bell notification thing so that whenever, on the rare occasions when I actually get a video finished, you'll be, uh, you'll be notified about it. 
My next video, as I, I think I briefly mentioned earlier, is a big diorama. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of detail to it. I've, it's probably about 75% finished, uh, so that's going to be my next focus. Um, here's a couple of shots of, of where I am with it currently. Uh, it's shaping up to be really cool. I've got some great ideas with that, and I'm going to apply some of the gore and blood effects from this video into that diorama as well. Uh, so yeah, stick around for that. I do apologize for taking so long to get this video made. Um, I've had a lot of stuff going on in real life um, and been trying to balance sort of this crafting channel and work and everything else, all the commitments of life. One of the ways that I'm going to need to kind of learn how to improve is not just kind of in my crafting, but also in like time management and project management and stuff like that. I just, I'm new to all this, so I, I um, that's one of the other disciplines that I'm just going to have to get better at. But if you don't hear from me for a long time, it's not because I've given up. Uh, I have got the bug for crafting and I'm going to continue doing this. Um, so yeah, just be patient and thank you. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Uh, thanks, everybody. Take care and have a great day doing whatever you're doing. Um, see you again. <laughs>